Hello people of YouTube, it's Deepak here, and welcome to DCS World 2.9.4 and Razbam Simulations F15E Strike Eagle module. Welcome to tutorial 10, Laser Guided Bombs. Today I'm going to demonstrate the use of the Paveway 2 and Paveway 3 class weapons which are available on the Strike Eagle, these being the GBU-10, which is a £2,000 class weapon of the Paveway 2 class, the GBU-12, which is a £500 weapon of the Paveway 2 class, and the GBU-24, which is a £2,000 weapon in the Paveway 3 class. Uh, today I just have GBU-10s and GBU-12s on board. Uh, on the left CFT I have four GBU-12s, as you can see here. And if we go on a little tour on the other side, uh, I've got two GBU-10s on the right CFT today. So, uh, wasn't that cinematic? What camera moves I have these days? Anyway, uh, <laughs> these are the weapons that we currently have, and the reason we're on the ground is there is a little bit of setup that we need to do here before getting into the air. Um, the main one being the laser codes. Now, you can adjust the laser codes on the ground by interacting with the ground crew, and uh, this can be done either with the engine off, or if you have your engines running, you need to have your parking brake set. Or, in the case of the F-15, it's really brake hold. You can then go into the ground crew menu, and you'll see that there's the option for GBU laser codes. And you can then choose which codes you want to change. Uh, the fun thing in the 15 is that uh, you can easily set up different codes for different stations. Something that I've noted while testing this is you cannot select the all option unless you actually have bombs on all pylons, it seems. It, it kind of bugs out and doesn't work properly. So in my case, I'm going to select left CFT, set them, and then set the right CFT. So if I choose left CFT, this little UI element pops up and it shows you the rotaries that would be present on the side of the bomb. Uh, and you can then right click and left click to go through these codes. Uh, the first digit is always one, the second digit uh, can only be 567. Uh, I'm going to go for 5, and then digits 3 and 4 can be any number 1 to 8. Uh, in my case, I'm doing 1577 as my codes. I then go back to the ground crew and I say laser codes hide, and then I repeat for the other station I want to do. So ground crew, laser codes, and then write CFT. And I can confirm it's also set to 1577, which is my intention for this particular mission. So I can then go ground crew, laser codes, and hide. And that is now done. So, uh, with that done, we, we could do the PAX programming on the ground, but I'm going to continue to do the rest of this tutorial in the air. So, I'll see you there. Okay, we're back in the cockpit, and I'll go through the steps necessary to set up the aircraft for this laser-guided bomb release. If we take a little look at our TSD on the multi uh, multi-purpose colour display, uh, you can see our flight plan here. Uh, today our target is at steer point 3, it's a bridge that we're going to hit. Um, so first thing I'm going to do is designate steer point 3 as a target. So if I go menu, and then I choose the steer point menu at the top right here, I'm going to enter 3 into the scratch pad and select it as the current steer point, and then if I enter 3 decimal into the scratch pad and enter that as the steer point, it will convert steer point 3 into a target point. You can see it has a triangle now. Steer point 2 is also automatically changed into an IP. Next, I'm going to take the right DDI and bring up the PAX system by choosing Menu and then Armament. We'll then choose Air to Ground PAX mode, and you can see our Air to Ground armament across the top here, carrying four GBU-12s and two GBU-10s. For program 1, which I'm going to do first, you've got four programs that you can create here. Program 1, I'll choose the GBU-12s. We'll do an automatic delivery, which is synonymous with constantly computed release point. I'm going to do a stepped release, which means I will only ever drop one bomb at a time, with nose and tail fusing. We can also set how we want the laser to work. So if I go to air to ground delivery and choose the program page, at the bottom here you can see that we have auto lasing, or manual lasing, and that can be continuous or with a time. In the case of the 12s, I'm going to do an automatic laser, and I'm going to tell it to fire the laser 20 seconds from impact. You can enter any number you want into the scratch pad and then press this PB to set the time. So 20 seconds from impact, the laser will come on automatically. Let's go back to the PAX page again. We're going to choose Program 2. 
For program two, we'll take the GPU tens, and again, it'll be automatic, stepped, nose and tail. And if I go air to ground delivery and program page again, for these ones, I'm gonna do manual lasing so that I demonstrate both methods. Back to the main menu, back to armament, and that's the two programs created. Next thing we want to check is that the laser is armed. We can see this in the front cockpit here. Laser arm switches in the back cockpit, so if it wasn't on, we could ask our Wizzo, or if I press number two and jump into the back cockpit myself, here is the laser arm switch. This needs to be forwards in the armed position. Jumping back into the front cockpit, we're now gonna set up uh, master arm, that's on, and then if I bring up the left DDI, I'm gonna go menu and teapod because of course we need the T-Pod for doing the lasing. Uh, we changed the laser code to 1577 on the bombs, and you can see the pod is still programmed to emit 1688. So let's go 1577 on the scratch pad and pop it into the targeting pod. It will now emit the correct code. And you can see the mode that the laser is in right now, manual laser continuous. That's because we have program two selected. Like I say, I'll do program one first. We'll drop a GBU-12 first and it now confirms auto-lasing, 20 seconds. Long press of ca castle hat switch left gives me the command bars, and I'm gonna go coolie hat switch up, that gives me steer point two, up again, steer point three, that's my target, and I'm gonna go auto axe switch forward to FOV in. And at this point, we're pretty much ready to go. So let's uh, pull the paddle to disengage the autopilot, and let's turn on target here. Oh, and uh, air to ground master mode on. I was wondering why I didn't have symbology. <laughs> so there we go. We're in air to ground master mode and we're ready to go. You can see that confirmed at the bottom right of packs. It now says ready. So let's come inbound waypoint or steer point three, sorry, to use the correct terminology for the Strike Eagle. So we're inbound this and you can see bottom right of the HUD, target 3A. We've got a distance. We've got time to release, and we're in an auto mode. So let's continue inbound. Uh, actually, I'll gain a little bit of height. And th this release works exactly like any other uh, constantly computed release point release. We just fly the flight path marker on the ASL, this vertical line here. And when we're 10 seconds to release, we push and hold weapons release, and the bomb will come off. And in this case, the laser will fire automatically. Yeah, I'll refine my target a little bit once I get closer, because this, of course, is not quite on. I'm actually, at this point, I'm just going to pop the aircraft into autopilot, so I don't need to pay too much attention. And uh, we can see down here, actually, it's not too bad. Let's go auto act forward. Let's move over the target. You can see my cursor mode is target, so I'm going to depress the TDC. That's me designated it. I'm also going to depress auto ac and that will give me area track let's see if we can get a good it's not tracking super well actually but maybe that'll be close enough okay time to release is about about now i'm going to push and hold pickle the bomb came off and let's go ahead and watch what we get on the on the pod here time to impact is less than 20 seconds laser is firing it's going to keep the crosshair on the target and hopefully, something good will happen. Boom! That was a direct impact. Nice. Okay, uh, and the laser automatically turns off a short time after the predicted impact time. You can see it's returned to arm. So that was a successful launch of a GBU-12. Let's see if we can do the same thing with a GBU-10, this time with a manual release. So I cycle to program two, and all my parameters are automatically loaded. I'm gonna knock off the autopilot again. I'm gonna continue outbound until we're at about 10 miles, and then I'll come back around. Uh, that should give us enough space to maneuver and get set up again. So that was easy enough, not too difficult. Uh, this'll be the same, the only difference is this time, we'll have to judge when we want the laser to come on ourselves, and we'll press the left multifunction button in order to toggle the laser on and off. Now that's nine miles, that's probably good enough. Let's uh, pull back around and see if we can deal with this target again. I don't know if there'll be much to hit, actually. I might need to aim at something beside the bridge because I've kind of demolished it. That's it. We'll pick something. We'll pick something. 
Okay, rolling out on target. And we are 45 seconds to go. Let's uh, let's simply move this to an area over here. I'm going to depress to redesignate. You'll see that moved my ASL, and I'm still in area track, so we're we're good to go. You'll also note on the top left of the targeting pod, it now says MLAS continuous. Uh, that's just our um, kind of reminder that we're going to have to manually fire the laser here. Uh, so you'll see the L at the bottom right, kind of confirming the laser is ready to go. 15 seconds to a release, as confirmed on the HUD. Let's just fly that ASL. Doesn't matter massively because it's a laser-guided bomb, but still, let's give it the best chance. Weapon release is depressed, waiting for the bar to pass the flight path marker. Weapon is away, and I'm going to turn off target just gently and go autopilot. And let's just look at the targeting pod. 18 seconds, I'm depressing the left multifunction button. You'll see L is flashing and Lays flashes at the top there. 10 seconds to impact. We'll follow this one in, actually, in the F6 view. And, yep, that's going right where I pointed the, the pod. Bang! And now I can... Oh, actually, the laser turns itself off once it gets masked, so uh, I could have tapped the left multifunction button again, but the laser turned itself off anyway. Excellent. So that's the entire procedure for making use of the laser-guided bombs. Remember to either set your codes on the bombs on the ground using the ground crew or in the mission editor, and then also, of course, make sure that your targeting pod is using the same code. Uh, these weapons are capable of being buddy lazed, so if for whatever reason you don't have a pod, you can get somebody else to laze for you and uh, just make sure that you set the codes appropriately. Okay, I hope you all enjoyed that. Thank you very much for watching. If you haven't already, please subscribe, like, and comment. It's a really big help to me and to the channel. If you'd like to further support the channel, you have the option of joining Deep Hack's ground crew by clicking the join button below. It's a small monthly fee, about the same as the cost of a cup of coffee per month, and you get some small benefits in that you get to join a Discord server with myself, and I've also started uploading some of my mission files to that Discord server. We also, on occasion, do some flying together as well. So thank you all very much for watching, fly safe, and I'll see you next time.